Redis in-memory database which is used for a lot of purposes like for example caching or temporary data store in a key value method. In this video we're going to see how to run it as docker containers and also later we'll see how to persist the data that is stored in Redis. So we'll actually be able to access the data that is written to it after the container restarts. Stick with me to find out more about this. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here. In this video we're going to see how to run Redis server in Docker and also in the upcoming video we'll see how to cluster it, how to replicate it also in Docker environment with the authentication enabled. So right before I jump into this video please do give a visit to my channel. I've got videos and playlists about cool technologies so without any delay let's get into work. So in the official Docker Hub page for the Redis which is the image that I'm going to actually use in this video. Over here we can see the overview of it and the tags that are available as versions that we can use the exact version that we desire. So as always I'm going to run this container with a docker compose file so as you can see over here I've got the very basic docker compose file which I'm going to explain in just a moment. There is only one service in this which is Redis. The image that it's using is Redis with the tag of 7 and it just got a name for the container and the only port that is going to be exposed to the outside machine will be the default port that the Redis will be running on. So I'll move to the terminal, I'll hit ls, I'll make sure I'm in the same place that the docker compose file exists. So the thing that I'll do is say docker compose opd which will create both a network and the desired service that is declared inside this docker compose file. So as a result if I say docker compose ps I'll see that I have the Redis container up and running on the port that I defined in the ports section. So in order to connect and test this I'm going to actually use a extension in the VS code. I'll try to create a connection and over here I'll give it a name. I'll choose the Redis from the server types and the host and the port will be the default values and actually there will be no username and password for this connection that I'm making right now. So I'll save it. If I open this I'll see that there is the zero index database which I'll be actually also open it in the terminal and if I like for example say set a 10 actually I'm going to refresh this as a result I can see that I have the A key over here which if I open I should get the 10 as the value. So that's the simplest way that the Redis server is up and running and listening for the connections but the problem might be in some cases is that the data is not persisted. If I actually say docker compose down and docker compose up dash d again if i just go ahead and refresh this as you can see the database is empty because the data has not been persisted and when the container gets destroyed all the key value pairs that are stored in the redis server will be gone forever so in order to actually persist the data inside the redis i'm going to first change the command that is running and I'll pass the required options and second I'm going to actually mount the directory that the data will be stored inside the container to outside to my machine. So the command that I'll use is 
read this server dash dash append only yes and dash dash require password password which is actually the password that i'll be actually used to log into redis server and store and get the data out of it so the dash dash append only option will actually persist the data in the slash data directory inside the container so the only thing i need in here is that i'll try to declare a volume i'll say dot slash data and I'll map it inside the container to the slash data. So I'll be actually access the data in the directory that will be created right next to this docker compose file. So if I save this, I'll say docker compose down and docker compose up dash D again. So if I hit LS, I'm expecting to see a data directory over here which the actual data of the redis will be stored so again using the extension i'm going to create a terminal inside the container connected to the redis server but as you can see it throws an error saying authentication required because i just password protected my redis server as you can see over here in the command that i I'm running the Redis server so the thing that I'll do is that I'll try to edit the connection to the Redis server and down over here in the password section I'll pass the password that I declared in the docker compose file so if I save this again try to create a connection inside the container with the redis cli so this extension actually makes a terminal inside the container with the redis cli server so for any reason if you don't want to use this extension the thing that i'll do is say docker exec dash it i'll pass in the container name and i'll say bash to actually run the bash session inside the container and if i say redis cli with the dash a option i'll be actually able to pass in the password so i'll say password which is the password for my redis server so actually i am in the exact same location as the extension put me inside the container so it won't make any difference if i say set a 10 and i'll just hit the refresh button over here i see that the a key is stored and using the extension if i say set b11 i get ok as the result and if i also hit refresh i see the second key is created successfully so i'll come out of the terminal and this time if i say docker compose down and docker compose up dash d so this time if i refresh this actually i see that my keys are persisted over here and if i try to access their values they are exactly the values that i just set in the previous container so that's all for this video in the upcoming video we'll see how to replicate redis servers in the master slave method so i'll put the links down below as soon as it's ready and also i'll put the links for my github repository down below where i'll push all the codes and configurations so you'll be able to access them easily if you have any questions if you have any recommendations just go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below please don't forget to like and subscribe and with that i hope to see you in the next videos